Hey, good evening. So let's get started. You should have a pencil, some lined paper, and this workbook page right here, 7 4 Practice. Um, it's actually page 195 that we got from class today. If you lost it, you can always download another copy from my website. Just go to today's date and um, click down below um, under the video. There's a file, and just click and then print it out. Okay, so this workbook page, we're going to do number 7 and 8. And then on the back side, we're going to do 26 and 28. Now, we're only doing four problems, but there isn't a lot of space on this paper for us to do, to work with. That's why we need line paper. So you need line paper and title it like this, workbook, page 195, 7, 8, 26, and 28. Okay? Okay, let's see what today is about. Today is about working with right triangles that are similar. Okay, now if you look at all of these right triangles, look at number seven. How many right triangles do you see? Some people see two, some people see three. Three is the right answer. Okay, the little one is right here. There's a medium sized one, and there's this the huge one. That's the large one. The large one has a right corner there. The medium one has a right corner right there. And the small one has an invisible right corner right there. Okay? Now, to even see how these triangles are similar, it's hard when they're all jammed together and twisted upside down and weird. So we're going to have to unjam them by separating them. And that's the visual challenge of this, is how do we separate them so that they all look the same way. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to want them to separate in a certain way. Like if I separate this little one just the way it is, it's going to look like this. And, and please don't draw this. And the medium one will look like this, with the right corner up there. And then this large one, with the right corner down here. See how all the right corners are all in a different location? And the hypotenuse is all in a weird different location? So this doesn't help when you separate this way. We want to separate them so that they all face the same way. So that the right corners are all down here. The hypotenuse is slanted the same way so that we can tell, oh, this side matches with this one and this one. The hypotenuse matches with that hypotenuse and that hypotenuse. Okay, so it's easy to line them up. So that's what we're going to do is on your line paper, you're going to redraw the large triangle first and then the medium one and then the small one, all facing the way the large triangle is facing. So give me a large triangle with the right corner down here on your line paper. So I'm going to do this. Here's the large one. Put a right corner. Draw the same triangle but just slightly smaller. And draw another one just like it but tiny. All of these triangles are similar and they're right. Okay. Now let's go find the letters so we can put the letters in the right corners. I'm going to make this page smaller so I can see both screens here. Okay, look at number seven. This large triangle has L, K, and J. So that's why I'm going to put L, K, and J. Now I'm going to go for the small one. So this tiny small one right here. Okay, let's go for the small one. I always look for the right corner. This small one has a right corner right there on the left of M. It's kind of invisible. So that right corner gets the letter M. So right here. Now I'm going to go find the short side and get that letter and then I'll get the last one. Here's the short side of this small triangle. The short side has the letter L. So then the hypotenuse is LK. Find the short corner, put an L and an LK. Here's a short L. And K goes here. So I hope you see what I'm doing. And let's see if we can name the medium one. Notice the right corner is M for the medium one right here. So M is going to go right there. The short side gets the letter K and the hypotenuse gets a J. Okay, so hypotenuse, <coughs> I'm sorry, um, the right corner gets an M. And what do we see the short side gets? Short side gets a K and then J. Alright, so short side is here, K 
and then J. So we can now name the triangles. We can name it in the right order. If I go from left and clockwise, this is triangle KLJ is similar to triangle MKJ is similar to triangle MLK. What that does is it helps us line up the um, hypotenuse. Here's the hypotenuse. Okay, and here's the right corner. They're all facing the same way. We success successfully um, separate the three triangles. Now, if I were to um, write a scale factor, like a fraction, I would just take the side of the hypotenuse, LJ, whatever number that happens to be, put it over a fraction with KJ, and that's a scale factor between the large triangle and the medium triangle. If I want to do the same scale factor, but to the medium and the small, I would go KJ over LK. This is medium to small. If I want to do between large and small, the hypotenuse would be LJ over LK. So these are, are just fractions, and they're going to have to be, be um, the same, okay? The scale factor would have to be um, growing the same way. All right, now let's do number eight. So I want, what I want you to do is try to do it on your own. Your job is to separate these three triangles, redraw them facing the same way, and then naming the, all the triangles with letters. Okay, so go ahead and pause me. All right, so here are the three triangles, large, medium, and small, facing the way the um, large one is facing. I got the letters for the large one. Now I'm gonna go after the medium one. Here, the medium one, I look for the right corner which is H, so the right corner here will get an H. And then the hypotenuse of this medium triangle is FD. Okay, F is along the long corner, whereas D is along the short corner. Okay, so I'm gonna put F along the long, D along the short. Now let's go after the small triangle. This small triangle, the right corner is invisible right there. That's where H is. So I put H here. And then let's go after the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is right here from D to E, but notice how D is in the long side and E is in the short side. Okay, so here's D and here's E. Now let's name the triangles. I'm gonna go counterclockwise this way. I'm going to call this triangle EDF. So now I must call this triangle DHF. I'm going counterclockwise. And this is triangle EHD. Okay, here's the hypotenuse. It's sitting flat. All three of them are sitting flat. And here's the right corner. There we go, all facing the same way, all right? Hopefully this is will get easier for you, but I know this is difficult, okay? So don't worry if you're not getting it yet. Hopefully with time, it'll get easier as we separate more triangles. All right, let's go to number 28, right here. I'm gonna make this big for a little bit. Number 28 says, um, we have to solve for the variable x right here. In order to solve for x, we need to separate the three triangles so we can set up sides that are congruent to each other, or I'm sorry, similar to each other, so we can set up a proportion, which are like fractions, and then we can crisscross, multiply, and solve for stuff. Okay, so let's separate these three triangles. You go ahead and pause me and separate on your own and then check back. Okay, so here are my three triangles redrawn facing the way the large triangle is facing. Notice the hypotenuse is all lined up, right corners all lined up. Now let's put in numbers. I'm seeing a number 4 here and a number 10. That belongs to the small triangle. The short side, the 10, the hypotenuse is blank. So let's go do that to the small triangle. 
So this short side here is 4, this long side here is 10, and this is blank. Okay. Now we go look at the medium triangle. Look at the way the medium triangle is facing. The hypotenuse is blank. Okay. This long side has a letter X, and this short side has a letter has a number 10. Short is 10, long is X, hypotenuse is blank. See how it's easy to mix them up? Okay. Now right there. I'm going. Okay, but see the big triangle. Look at this huge triangle. This edge here, edge here is blank. This edge here is got a 4 and got an X. It's not 4 times X. It's actually 4 plus X. Okay, let me explain why. The X probably threw you off. But see, if this x here was a 5, this would not be 45, it's 4 plus 5, which would be 9. This whole thing is 9, but we don't know what x is, so we just go 4 plus x. Okay, to solve for x, I look at my three triangles. Can I set up, can I match up a fraction somehow? I'm going, hmm, long, short, long, short. Hey, right here. See, this one doesn't have information that match up the sides that I need. So I'm going to use these two triangles and ignore this one. Don't need that one. See this one here, I can put 10 matches with the 4, and then X matches with the 10. Okay, see I'm just matching sides. Bottom goes with bottom, the straight up side goes with the straight up side. Now I set an equal sign. Okay, now I can crisscross multiply. Crisscross this way, I get 10 times 10. Crisscross this way, I get 4 times x with an equal sign between. 10 times 10 is 100. And then I divide by 4. x is equal to 25. Done. Okay? So this whole separating triangle business is just so that we can match up the sides and set up fractions so we can solve for x. That's why we do that. Okay? All right, That's the last problem is number 26. I want you to go ahead and pause me and separate the three triangles on your own and unpause me. All right, so notice here the large triangle. X is here, Y is here, and then this whole side goes from 9 all the way to 1. How long is this whole thing? 10, that's right, x, y, and then 10. So I'm going to put x here, y, 10. Let's go look at other triangles, see if we can get more information. Okay, so here's the tiny one, the small one. The short side is 1, the long side is blank, and the hypotenuse is x. Okay, so let's do that. Hypotenuse is x, and the short side is 1. Okay? And let's go look at the medium triangle. Medium, the hypotenuse is the right triangle, right, right angle here. So the hypotenuse is y. Don't get confused with this right angle. This right angle belongs to the large one, okay? So here's the right angle. So y is the hypotenuse. Y goes right there. Then there's that 9. I'm trying to find where it should go. This 9, this is the short side of the medium triangle, so this is the long side. So the long side would be right here. This gets a 9. Okay, and that's all we have. Alright, so now we get to have a decision to make. Solve for x first or solve for y first? I'm thinking, why not solve for x first, okay? Well, which two triangles have x? These two right here. So the only two I, I get to work with, because this other one doesn't have X. All right, so I'm going to match up. This edge goes with that edge, and then this one goes with the hypotenuse. So X over 1, and then 10 over X, okay, with an equal sign. These are proportions. If you crisscross here, you get X times X. Crisscross here, you get 1 times 10, with an equal sign in between. x times x is not 2x. Do you guys remember what that is? It's x squared, power 2. 
equals 1 times 10 is 10. What this says is some number multiplies by itself is equal to 10. Well, there is no such whole number. It's probably a decimal. So to do that, we just square root both sides. And the square root of x squared is just x. And the answer is root 10. So we solve for x. I'm not going to have you guys simplify just yet. We're just going to leave the square roots for now. We'll deal with simplifying another day, okay? Now let's solve for y. Which two triangles have y in it? This one and this one. This one doesn't, so ignore the small one. Okay, so this triangle has a hypotenuse and a long side. This triangle does have a hypotenuse and a long side. It has information, so I'm going to match it up. I'm going to highlight it so you can see it. This one goes with this one. So I'm going to put 10 over y. You could put y over 10, doesn't matter. I'm just starting left to right. And then this edge here goes with this edge. I'm starting left to right, so I'm going to put y over 9 with an equal sign in between. When you crisscross these two, you get 10 times 9. Crisscross these two, you get y times y with an equal sign in between. 90 equals y squared. To solve for it, we square root both sides. And we're going to get root 90 is equal to y. There you go. Okay? So we solve for it. The story, the moral of the story of today's lesson is this. To solve for these variables, we need to have the triangles all separated, facing the same way so that we can match up the sides properly into fractions. And then we have a proportion, we crisscross, multiply, and solve. And that's it. Okay? So don't go away. You do have a quiz to take. Go to my website, take the online quiz, and you get three points. All right, have a good night.